Welcome. Good evening. Welcome back to Lebanon. Join us as we embark embark on our worship journey tonight. And we will begin now. Wednesday night worship, 11, 15, 23, 7, 30 p.m., Lebanon, Connecticut. So we will do the prelude and then get started. Prelude is a breathing place. Oh 
Announcements for tonight. The next train trips are the following. Providence 1216 and DC 1424. Tonight's message is decision making. Advent plan is on the next slide and it is communion Wednesday. So this is the schedule for the next month. Open in him is here I am to worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me king of all days oh so highly exalted glorious in heaven above humbly you came to the earth you created all for love's sake be made core. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Oh, how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we come before you ready to worship and ready to give you our all. Sometimes in life, 
we don't make time for you. But now, tonight we have. So help us to realize that we can conquer any obstacles if we have you as a pillar, as we survey that wondrous cross this day and every day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I survey. So when I survey 324. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss. And for contempt on all my pride, forbidden Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the big things that charm me <coughs> most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his head is me. Sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did there such love and sorrow me? War thorns compose so rich a crown. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine. Demands my soul, my life, my all. Somewhere in your silent night. Again, this is another preview for Advent.
Love will find you. Okay, so the offertory tonight is a communion reflection. This is a myth of were you there and let us break bread together on our knees. Now, as a reminder, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but please, can we get some views on this channel? 63, 63 of you have subscribed. Please. I want to get these videos monetized. You know, we want to see a plaque right here. So please... Subscribe, like, do what you got to do there. Anyway, so the offertory is a communion re reflection.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly home. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, we know what happened on that Good Friday makes us tremble, and we know this table is, is a part of that journey. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we continue our walk into the final stretch here of this fall semester, and hopefully on our way back to be with somebody that we want to be with. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. So, the reading tonight is Ephesians 5, 11 to 20. And this is all about making decisions. I'm going to read this bit by bit, and then I'll explain it to you as I go along. Don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Pause right there. So that's the first bit of this. I just was reading an article from... One of the sources that we follow here from Fox 13 Tampa Bay. And there is this guy that met up with somebody in the wrong way. Now, we talked about it all the time, you know, making safe choices and so on. Well, this guy met somebody on a dating app and was brutally murdered. Bad things happen in the dark. That was one of those. What was this guy thinking? Do they do they not realize that if you're going to do something like that, there is always the risk of something bad happening? Do they not realize that? You would think they would. Do they not know what those apps are for? Sure. You might meet somebody nice, and then, you know, you do your thing with them, and so on. But, to be brutally murdered in your own home for making a poor decision, that, my friends, is the, de is the textbook definition of insanity. This happens, this happens a lot more times than you think. People use these apps. They think they want, they think, oh, they're going to get what everybody else wants. No. No. You're not. Safety is a big issue when it comes to using these things. Where is the psychology in using these? It's like, what are you doing? So now, the one that did this will probably be serving a life sentence. 
number one. Number two, the one that was unwarrantly killed has no future. Because of one stupid decision. Bad things happen, guys. They happen all the time. And it is important for us to recognize the fact that our decisions have positive and negative consequences. So if you think about it, that was a negative consequence for what happened to that individual in Florida. Now let's bring it to home. Now let's think about at home. Now, as you know, I have been contacted two times by phone from the one that we were hanging out with over the summer. Monday was the third time. And the third time was in person. Just having a nice lunch with Grandma, and then there he was. It wasn't like we were looking for him. It just so happened that it just so happened to be in the same place at the same time. So I went up to him. I said hi to him. You know, I asked him how everything was going. You know, I gave him a hug and whatnot. And I told him, you know, that when he was ready to reach out and hang out again, please let me know. Short and sweet. I have also sent him a Thanksgiving card. Just a simple message saying, you know, that, you know, thankful for all those amazing times this summer. You know, thank you for coming, in my, coming into my life and so on. Just a friendly gesture because that's important. So that's a positive decision. That's a positive choice. And he needs to hear that. He needs to hear that, you know what? We want that I want to be with him, that we understand what we would what we would be in for in the event that it was to happen again. Now, as you know. And as we've talked about all along, you know, we talked about gaslighting. We talked about, you know, don't get dragged into the drama. This is why we have to make informed decisions. I guarantee you, when he receives that card, he would probably, he'll probably reach out. That was sent yesterday, so I'm pretty sure he'll have it tomorrow. And then we take baby steps back to where we were. The fact is, he knows that we still love and care about him very, very much. Even in this, even in this period. Of course, we want to hang out with him. We want to see how well, see how he's doing, and so on. But there has to be a decision, an informed decision. Obviously, a decision that would have to be made between the two people involved, myself, and obviously him. But Let's go back to the Florida story because it just blows me away. This is not, that's not what should happen. That was unnecessary. It's one thing to do that and then be done. But it's another to do that and then, you know, do what the person did. Rip the cover off those frauds who 
and see how attracted they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep, climb out of your coffins, Christ will show you the light. So watch your step, use your head, make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. So basically he's saying to use our time effectively and to use our time meaningfully. Now, let's look at the Mossad's experience two weeks ago, because clearly this was an area that we thought was the right decision, was the answer to this. Now, as you know, we all want some time to ourselves to just go somewhere and just relax and, you know, just think about everything. Well, we do, but we have to think about it rationally. Now, I think this massage, that it, it was just, it was too much. It, I cannot believe somebody would pay $220 for something for an hour. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Now, the reason why it was like that, I cannot tell you. I can't tell you because this is a family-friendly channel. But mostly what I can tell you is basically go in there and, you know, your clothes come off and, you know, and I'll let you guys figure out the rest of that. But this, again, was a bad decision. It seemed like a good one at the time. But, again, it turned out not to be a good decision financially. So this is what I'm talking about. We have to use our time effectively, and we have to make decisions that are good for us that will have a decent outcome. If we don't have a decent outcome, then we know it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Did it seem good at the time? Sure. But not for $220, it wasn't. No. No, that is too high. The next thing I want to talk to you about in this decision-making process is realizing what is a scam and what isn't. Now, in case you haven't noticed, there are ads on Facebook saying, you know, oh, you can get organic viewers, you can get this, you can get that by doing everything with the channel and whatnot. Those are scams. The only way to get views and to get subscribers is to continue making content so that way people will come to your channel and actually watch what it is you're presenting to them. This is the world that we live in, guys. This is what it is like living in this world of 2023. We talk about relationships a lot here. And obviously, all of this kind of goes back to 2021, like in this pattern of thinking that we were doing the right thing. And obviously, it felt like the right thing, but maybe it wasn't the right thing in the long run. We think about the relationship from two years ago in West Haven. We think about every single one of these where things have not gone our way. And that really shows that they made decisions that they thought would do them good. But the reality is, no. 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 
Think about the West Haven example. Think about this. I was with him for 15 months. So a year and three months. Now, what was what was going through his mind? Think about think about this. If you know somebody was going to come visit you in two hours, then you would want to make sure that you were still there. But no. No. That's when they decided to make the choice of making a poor choice of running away. There is this theory that he's still here. He very well could be. But this is not our problem now. There are reasons why all of this happened. And probably for reasons that we cannot even fathom or even imagine why things happened. And, you know, I've always said that a relationship is like going around the board in a monopoly. You really don't know what you're going to be in for because each one has its own story. Don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God. He was dressed of him. Sing to him instead of drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart of Christ, from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a son to God the Father in the name of our Master, Jesus Christ. So this is what this is. He's basically telling us that we have to make good decisions or make good choices. Do I think that what happened this summer might happen again? It might. But now we'll be ready for it because now we know how to handle it. Because it's not one person winning over the other. It is about realizing that, you know, that we can take ownership for ourselves and actually think, is it worth it? So, that's the intro to making decisions. We'll be back with that next week. Come to the Lord. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here. We in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. 
The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is here. The one singing meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and come and came. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Give him for you. So on the night of betrayal, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup.
And after blessing it, he said, In this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we're reminded that he is the living Christ, who is alive even now in 2023, and he helps us make the right decisions. Lord, your table is a reminder of what you did for us. And so now, as we end this service, may it be a reminder of what you've done and the things that we've accomplished this year. As it is in that prayer that you taught us, say it together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear my prayer.
Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. And the communion offertory is above all.
And thank you for watching, and good night.